Yo, welcome back to the BSN channel. Just gonna do a part three to this um, things Ghanaian mothers don't like. And this will be the last part. I don't want to do too many parts to this. So, uh, the other video we did here, we was walking through the park and I don't know, it was a bit awkward watching these people looking at you funny. But I don't have a problem, I just, I just have to get used to it. But anyway, one thing my mum doesn't like, well in general, yeah. She doesn't like me cooking at night time. Okay, so sometimes I come in late and uh, say she's left me something like fufu. Now, I don't mind eating fufu and soup cold, but I don't know about you, I like eating my fufu piping hot. Now, say it's gonna be on nine o'clock at night, my mum would not allow you to warm anything up unless she's up and she's. Say she feels guilty, which doesn't happen often. She'll make you, she, she'll let you cook up to midnight. At night time, mom just doesn't like the smell. Like, it could be the smell of bread. She'll come out of her room and go crazy. She'll be like, you've blocked my nose, I can't breathe in my room. If I, if I reheat something like curry, say rat, chicken curry with rice, she will go crazy. You see the way the spices, the fragrance of the spices can affect her, people's nose. She'll come out of the room just swinging. So, that's why we don't do that in our house. Another thing is she doesn't like the washing up not done. So, my mum does the cooking. Not always, because I cook. Yeah, I, I cook. And uh, she likes the washing up done. Even when I'm cooking, she tells me to do the washing up at the same time. That's, that's my mum for you. Another thing is, all right, so that noise is my brother sleeping. Okay. Times are hard, trust me. Um, all right, she doesn't like dirty rooms, so therefore you cannot leave your room dirty. But she can leave her room dirty. Yo. I can't speak for all Ghanaian mothers, but a lot of Ghanaian mothers, they got a lot of stuff in their room. Now, I'm not trying to generalize that with Ghanaian women. No, I'm not saying that. Do not get me in trouble. I'm not going to say that. Not all women, not all Ghanaian women are like this, but a lot of them are. They keep a lot of stuff in their room. I must have went to my auntie's house here. Yeah? She had 50 tins of uh, evaporated milk in her top wardrobe. Not even in the fridge, you know. Not even in the fridge, in the wardrobe. Then she's got boxes of electrical appliances she's bought from other countries just around, just around the way. She's got boxes of shoes. Obviously she got her shoes. She got different bags from different clothes shops. Kente cloths, you know the whole shebang. It just makes me laugh. And somehow that's meant to be a bedroom. Somehow my uncle and auntie was able to fit a big TV, their DVD, a little place to sit down and eat, which is the floor, a double bed, and the rest is just appliances. You know how much space could be saved by just storing it or getting rid of the rubbish? It's not rubbish. No, not, not today. Again, I'm not speaking for all women. Okay, so don't get angry. Hey, I'm like that myself. 
pa ma mam pa it gets to a point where my mum just doesn't want to clean her room. So she gets me to do it. Because I'll do it, you know. And trust me, it gets real bad. It gets bad to the point where she's got laundry that's been folded. That I've had to fold. I've done the laundry, folded the laundry. Left it in her room. A week later, it's still in her room. She hasn't put it in the wardrobe or nothing. It's on the side of her room. Imagine that times 20. But then again, she wants our room spotless. Okay. My mom doesn't like bad smells. No. No, no, no. Doesn't like bad smells, no. If you're not wearing deodorant, she will let you know. She'll be like, hm, you stink. Don't bath. Be like, yeah, I did bath. Yeah, but you stink. She's raw, man. What can I say? She's raw, like that. She's, you know, she has a softer side. Once in a, you know, once a full moon, she has a softer side. When when, when the camera's on, when the camera's on, she she's nice. And when the camera's off, she's still nice. But she just says her raw things. I don't know if I've mentioned this already, but she doesn't like me going out late at night. Which is understandable. But when it's only 7 o'clock at night or 8 o'clock at night and I'm only going to the shop, she doesn't believe me. I'm like, uh, Mom, I'm just going out to the shop. It'll be 10 minutes. No, you're not. If you go in shop, don't come back home. Go to wherever you're going. And tell them if you can, you can go stay there. Mama, I'm only going shop. No, you're not. Doesn't happen all the time, but at my age, she still said that to me. That's why if you have African parents, the only way to get out of the control is to start is to be rich. No, seriously. I know my dad's not African. Which I, I'm sort of lucky in that sense. Because he'd be strict. I mean, my dad's strict. But... You know what? It wouldn't make no difference. Because he has no control in that sense. He does the normal man stuff. He comes home from work. He relaxes. My mom is the man of the household. I, I don't care what anyone says. She runs that whole household. But my dad, he's just... God. <laughs> That's what a man does. He, he watches TV and eats the food. Does the garden sometimes. Typical man. And my mom, she hates cooking though. Sometimes she gets me to cook for him. All right, yeah, so that's another thing my mom doesn't like. She doesn't like cooking for people who doesn't, don't appreciate it. But she loves cooking, though. Don't get me wrong. When it comes to cooking her own food, like her favourite, like yam, plantain with contumery or uh, clava sauce, she's dancing while she's making that. Or she's making the right soup, the stinkiest soup for the fufu. Trust me. She's dancing. She's playing some Nana Amperdu, some old daddy lumba. While I was making this. I think I'm joking. I'm not even joking. Uh, what's the other thing she doesn't like? Oh, yes. How can I forget this? Never speak back. Oh, my God. The way I used to get beats when I was young for speaking back. Like, th this would be an example. So your teacher is telling me you didn't put the umbrella on when it was raining. And now you come home with wet head because you didn't listen to me and your teacher. 
Are you stupid? Yeah, but, but mum, but, but, but mum. Are you speaking back? Are you, sp are you, are you speaking? You foolish abort. If that's close to how it used to be. Hey, that's nothing. That's nothing. That's not abuse. That's discipline. Who, who remembers this one? When you get smacked on the head? Qua, qua. That's what she would say. Qua, qua. <laughs> like this. You see this, this part? Right here, yeah. Go on the head. Knock on the head. Who remembers those ones? Um, what are other things? I generally believe she doesn't like smacking. Us. Like, your parents don't like smacking you. It might look that way, especially from your mum. It looks like she's getting red. Like she's doing the dance. She's doing adora to it. She got the stink. <laughs> she got the stink ready. Like, <laughs> no, they don't like it. My mum don't like it. Do you know why? Because when I was young, yeah, she used to st send me to get the stick. I don't think my brother got that much of a treatment. But obviously, I was the first one, so I got, you know, I got it harder. She used to be like, I'm going to, I'm going to smack you, boy. I'm going to, I can't remember what she said back then. I think it was, you know, mibe, mibe bowl, something like that. I can't remember. Yeah. And she'll be, She'd be like, go, go and catch me, go and get me a stick. I can't remember what is, a stick is in tree, she used to say. <laughs> if she said it, I'll understand, yeah. I think it's Abba. I think that's what a stick is, Abba. I might be wrong. Anyway, I have to go and find a stick, here. Yeah. I'll bring her back the stick, yeah. And whilst I'm getting, whilst I'm getting the stick, yeah, I, before I even give her the stick here, yeah, she says, if it's a small stick, I'll beat you with a small stick and then go and get a bigger stick the size of a tree and demolish you. So what I did was, <laughs> I'm crying, like, you know, you're crying whilst you're getting the stick as well. Hoping that, she, you know, because you're crying, she's going to allow you. No. No, it doesn't work that way. You're gonna go and get your asutri, okay? Your punishment. Right in the bum. You know the worst area was my shin. You know the area behind your knee, between your knee and your bum. The sting was horrible. Like, I'll stop crying and just give up. I'll just be like, <laughs> you know when you're crying and you, you, you can't get any more to cry. You're just, <laughs> you're trying to cry. That, that's how bad it was. It wasn't too bad. Like, you know, I deserved it. All of that for speaking back. I think speaking back is the worst thing you could do to an African parent. They hate people speaking back. They don't understand it. Because when you go to Ghana, you shut your mouth. You're a child. Even to the age of 30, you're nothing. If you haven't got money, you shut up. You don't talk. You're a kid. Seriously. Age is very important in Ghana. That will smack you up. <laughs> There's no questions. And uh, last one, yeah, but not least. My mum doesn't like people saying stupid things. You see in Ghana, yeah, proverbs, or even West Africa in general, proverbs is very important. You know, Africans live by proverbs that's based on nature, things they see, facial expressions. So it's very proverbial. A lot of their expressions are very proverbial.
or they exp- they use the nature to express their wisdom. Like, for example, an empty calabash will never sink in a river. <laughs> an empty calabash will never sink in the river. <sighs> okay. So anyway, when I say stupid things, that's why I don't like speaking tree because first of all, I don't speak tree good. Tree is not a sort of language you can disrespect. You have to know how to speak it. It's not even good enough to know the words. I know the words. But you have to know how to use it. It's like you've got a sword. You know, tree is the sword. It's a samurai sword. But you've got to know how to swing it. Because if you don't swing it right, you might cut yourself. If you say something in tree to an older person, but you say it in the wrong way, do you know how stupid you'd be made to feel? They, they might laugh at you and then insult you. Or they might just insult you. you got to be careful with what you say. I mean, if you look like a foreigner, then they might allow you. But as a Ghanaian, you, know, you can't say stupid things. It's a, like, tree is a language here yeah, that... Well, it's not the only language. I can't speak for all the languages of Ghana, but for tree... You have to know what you're saying. You can't be a dumb person and speak tree. You won't have anything to say. Like, I've got an uncle in Ghana, in Kamasi. He's very wise. I'm not going to lie. I can't understand the tree that comes out of his mouth. Do you know why? He speaks in proverbs. Proverb, proverb. He has a proverb for nearly every situation. Sometimes I just don't get it. Like, well, like sometimes you'd be talking about the cockerel and the rooster rises in the morning to, I don't even know it like I understand what he's saying literally but I'm just thinking what, what does that mean <laughs> and I don't want to ask him oh uncle what do you mean by what you said and then in tree you'd be saying why are you stupid don't you understand or maybe maybe he might allow me. Anyway, so my mom comes from that sort of family. She came from a family where you don't open your mouth if you're dumb. So if I come out with anything dumb, my mom cannot ignore it. She'll just be like, are you dumb? Are you stupid? Now, let me bring that face again. <laughs> okay, for example, yeah, I say, um, I might say, oh, mom. Jaka. Balala. Daka. Are you dumb? What did you just say? Does that even make sense? Why are you speaking? That's what she'll say. Something like that. Or she'll be like, she might say that's Kwasia. But she'll never call us Kwasia. She believes that's a curse on the Jew. But she might say what we're doing is kwasia sem. And another thing. One, one last thing, yeah. She doesn't like people interrupting her when she's talking. So if she's on the phone and the house is on fire, uh, you. It's better to disconnect the phones than interrupt her. I'm joking. Obviously, that's important. <laughs> that's important. But what I'm saying is, uh, don't interrupt my mum when she's talking to another adult. She will blank you. Not even blank you. She will blank you at first, and then she will remember that you tried to interrupt her, and when she finishes the sent. What she's saying to another person She'll come back and say And you, why was you trying to talk to me When I was speaking to someone else Are you dumb
I, like, I love it when Africans ask that question. A logical question. And it's very direct. It has a lot of emotion in there. Like, are you dumb? Are you mad? But you, do you think? Yeah, you. Do you think? No, 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 no. You're, you're, you're not right. You're stupid. Everything's based on logic. A, A plus A equals 2A. Everything's logical. Right. Except the time. <laughs> Except the time. Time doesn't exist in Ghana. You've got sunrise and sundown. <laughs> sunrise, sundown. Simple. But the way they think is very logical. If you have sense and you have wisdom, people will like you in Ghana. You will survive in Ghana. No one can fool you. But if you're dumb, you won't be respected. They respect, they respect smart people. That's one thing I love about Ghana. They welcome education, but especially wisdom. Right. You make a mistake in Ghana. Even one mistake. The way they will correct you is as if they're telling you off. But they're not really telling you off. It sounds like it because the language is so loud and expressive. Like, for example, one time I was counting some cities with my uncle from Kamasi, yeah? And I counted it wrong. I said, oh, it's 500. I said, hey, no, it's not. It's a thousand. You counted it wrong. That's, it sounds like he wasn't happy with me. That's just the way he speaks. I'm, I'm cool with him. He's my favorite, one of my favorite uncles. But that's just his way of correcting me. Like, he couldn't believe that I got it wrong. He was just like, what? Are you, are you stupid? Doesn't mean he thinks I'm stupid, but... You're not expected to get things wrong. I mean... And you're certainly not meant to make the same mistake twice. That is not respected. That's why the biggest insult in Ghana, yeah, is... Kwasia. Yeah. Meaning you are foolish or Wuye Jimmy for or Wed Jimmy. They all revolve around foolishness. So being foolish is like the biggest insult in Ghana. Because if someone says you're foolish, this is how they think of it, yeah. If they say, Oh, you're foolish, it means your mum's a fool. Because your mum's the one that raised you. Yeah, most big Ghanaian mothers here yeah, are on your case. Everyone knows that. It just goes on the territory. Goes with the territory. So when you say, hey, you're foolish. Are you saying my brothers and sisters are foolish? My mum and dad is foolish. You say mum, my mum raised the fool. That's what, that's what I think it stems from. I might be wrong. But I think it comes from that. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Um, this is going to be the last of what Ghanaian mothers don't like. Because there's things she does like. Um, like what? She likes education. Um... She likes education. Oh yeah, and did I mention she likes education? Edu education. 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 That's it. <laughs> if you're not doing anything revolving around education and making yourself better in this world or being rich, uh, it's not seen as logical. You're a waste of space. Yeah? You could be a peaceful person. Like, mom, I want to be a priest. She'd be that. Like, mm. Okay. 
respect. My mom wouldn't matter. The money is not important. The education and the status, whether her children are clever, that's the most. That's the most thing that's important to my mom. She wants us to survive, but it's really important that we're wise, because that will stay with us for the rest of our lives. You know, money comes and go. Wisdom will help you grow. Money. It doesn't help you do anything. It helps you buy more material stuff. But see, without wisdom, you would lose all your money. But with wisdom, you can keep money. Maybe get more money. Or maybe find a way of not letting money consume, consume you too much. But still survive. Anyway, I'm going on too much. But leave it there. Peace. Just listening to some 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 preaching.